कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, PM makes major climate announcement. Khan disputes NFP claims. And diabetes stigma becoming harsh reality. From the studios of FBC Subar, Jackie Spade. Prime Minister Vurengi Mbani Marama has highlighted that Fiji intends to make climate risk reporting mandatory across every government ministry. Mbani Marama was speaking at a high-level virtual roundtable on climate action convened by the Un United Nations Secretary General along the margins of the 75th UN General Assembly. Lena Rees has more. The Prime Minister says that five years post Paris, climate emergency is expanding and its impact intensifying. Billions of people now share the anxiety Fijians have known for a generation as they find themselves one superstorm, mega fire, or flash flood removed from catastrophe. If we don't win the race to net zero emissions, we are headed for three or four degrees of global warming an earth we will not recognize, and a climate we cannot survive. Baini Marama has also called for far greater commitment to increasing global financing for climate action. Speeches won't save us, neither will nice suites or photo ops. From here on out, our only expectation is action. We need solidarity we can feel, reductions in emissions we can measure, and resources vulnerable nations can afford to access now. The UN Secretary General called the meeting to maintain and speed up such transitions everywhere and to ensure that climate action does not become a victim to the COVID-19 crisis. The scale of suffering around the world due to climate disruption will go beyond all our imagination. So let us commit today, now, to sweeping climate action that can lay the foundations for a world of health, security, and prosperity for all. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mbani Marama says the world must press onwards to a future of net zero emissions, stressing that this is the only new normal worth fighting for. Lena Rees, FBC News. The chair of the University of the South Pacific Audit and Risk Committee, Mahmoud Khan, says his family ties have nothing to do with concerns regarding USP Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Aluwalia. Khan is related to Minister for Economy Ayaz Said Kayyum, but was appointed to the USP Council by Education Minister Rosie Akbar. National Federation Party President Piyu Tikundua claims the minister has his own relative under his influence on the council. Edwin Nunn reports. Khan has been trying to have more than 30 allegations against Professor Pal independently investigated and says the claims still stand regardless of his relatives. I decided to put myself forward to actually uh, serve my dis dear, you know, beloved country. And uh, using my past experience, I've been able to do that. And now that seems to be a problem uh, with some people. He adds the NFP is quick to point fingers and allege abuse of power, but it refuses to recognize concerns over good governance at USP. However, for the management and the governance at the USP to do the same is acceptable and so seems to be supported by the National Federation Party. Khan denies that his dossier is designed to have Professor Aluwalia fired, maintaining that he only wants an investigation to get to the bottom of things. I, as the person who held all the documents relating to those 33 allegations, was never contacted, was never emailed, and never found. The National Party seems to be supporting its call that those things should be put aside and forgotten about. It is not good governance, not in my books. The Ministry of Economy has suspended grant payments to USP until an independent investigation is carried out that meets the satisfaction of the Fijian government. Edwin Nunn, FBC News.
Societies need to accept those with non-communicable diseases and support them. However, we still have people looking down on those who have NCDs such as diabetes. Diabetic patient Mariah Tambor says living with diabetes is a challenge for her as it is becoming a stigmatized condition. Tambor says the consequences of living with diabetes needs to be acknowledged, understood and addressed. Kritika Kumar reports. Mariah Tambua says people need to understand that having diabetes doesn't generally make them sickly, weak or limit their opportunities in life. The experience is really hard, maybe I have type 1, uh, health discrimination, criticism. So now I accept it, uh, that I have uh, type 1 diabetes, so I live in a normal life. The 30-year-old says she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was 14. And since then, she has overcome many challenges such as discrimination and criticism. I was not really coping with it so well. I do a lot of uh, counseling, I went for a lot of counseling. I do a lot of research. I share with uh, friends who all also have uh, type 1 diabetes. And they help me. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says even doctors do not understand the challenges faced by a diabetic patient. Young people who have who are trying to help each other overcome the challenges of diabetes can only find solace in each other. You can only find comfort in each other. It's very hard to find comfort outside. Dr. Fong says there is a rise in diabetes cases and it affects the nation's health and productivity. Therefore, national solidarity needs to be achieved in combating diabetes. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Discrepancies still exist in numerous national federation bank accounts and annual financial records after verification process by the Register of Political Parties. Registrar Mohammed Salim says the NFP failed to issue receipts, declare and reconcile deposits in bank accounts, and failed to keep proper accounts of fundraising activities. The NFP also used funds from a welfare account for other purposes. The amount and sources of donations are not true, and a proper reflection of monies received by the party and it has failed to issue receipts for all monies received. Sinim also revealed that a relief and welfare account was set up in 2016 but that was used for general operations. Donations to this account were also not properly registered. For the purposes of compliance, the registrar has provided full breakdown of all the discrepancies to the National Federation Party to assist the party in rectifying their defects to these public documents. NFP has 21 days to fix the discrepancies and resubmit its list of donations via fundraisers and direct bank deposits or face suspension. Up ahead, shipping operators told to make accessibility easier. And Fijians enjoying time out amidst COVID-19. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan. Shipping operators have been strongly encouraged to invest in vessels that make accessibility easier for physically challenged Fijians. Marking the 2020 World Maritime Day in Nandi, Minister for Transport Fayaz Koya highlighted that while the work of seafarers and ship workers is important, the rights of all travellers need equal attention. Josai Nanunga reports. Fayaz Koya reiterates that Fiji as a nation needs to uphold the rights of persons with disabilities and shipping operators are strongly encouraged to invest in vessels that makes accessibility easier for persons with disabilities. This financial year the ministry will look on uh, the work in terms of maritime travelers rights and I look forward to, your key, to, uh, to the input from key stakeholders and to provide your views as it will affect the rights of a passenger and the rights of a seafarer. For interlink shipping, uh, especially the safety for the passengers is a paramount for us, especially for those uh, who can say they are disabled. That when we purchase a vessel, so when we uh, bring a vessel to operate, we have all those on, on board. So when they come in, we have, like I said uh, earlier, uh, the safety is still a paramount for us. Meanwhile, the minister is calling on Fijians to command the work and sacrifices made by seafarers and ship workers. As we chart our economic recovery post-pandemic, we must ensure that we are building back in a sustainable manner. 
and protecting the health of our ocean, which is, a, which is a critical for the well-being of all Fijians. So it is our responsibility to ensure that we protect our oceans. The government is also initiating 100% sustainable management by shifting to low-carbon shipping. Chosaye Nanunga, FBC News. A man facing charges of arson and murder pleaded not guilty in the Suva High Court this afternoon. Arvind Chand is charged in the alleged murder of a 35-year-old woman in Lamy earlier this year. Apanisa Wangarandovu with the details. Chand is alleged to have killed Fai Yen Chen in her Lamy home on the 22nd of July. Firefighters found Chen unconscious when responding to a report of fire at her residence. After the accused gave his plea today, the Suva High Court allowed time for the prosecution to come up with evidence for possible conviction. Chand was further remanded and the judge indicated that his chances of getting bail were small as this was a serious case. The prosecution also said it will object to bail, saying Chand had a previous conviction in 2014 but since then had changed his name. A pre-trial date has been set for the 16th of next month. Apeniso Wangarandovu, FBC News. The Fiji Bitter Mara 7 drew a large crowd today as people were eager to get out of the house following the easing of health restriction measures. As one of the major sevens tournaments, the event has been anticipated by many. If BC News caught up with fans and families who came to see their favorite teams in Suva, Venina Rakautonga has more. For many, the Mara 7s presents an opportune time for the family during the school holidays. Actually, it's a great opportunity for us since it's a school holidays. We are so excited in this uh, big tournament to be part of this tournament this morning. Although we all stay in different parts of Fiji, this is something that brings us Fijians together to come and watch our sons, brothers and husbands and forget about the worries. Although Fiji is COVID contained, tournament organizers and fans are following proper hygiene measures. We agree with the measures that are in place and it is good to make sure everyone is still following the protocols while enjoying at the same time. Before coming inside, we were checked at the front gate and we are also putting on hand sanitizers because as everything goes back to normal, we still have to make sure we stay COVID free. The biggest crowd is expected at the ANZ Stadium in Suva tomorrow when the tournament enters its third and final day. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. Fiji's independence on October 10, 1970 will always hold a special place in the hearts of one particular family from Naivilava Nodo in Rewa. Six-year-old Evelyn Dimbao, a spectator among thousands at Alba Park, today shared happy memories of her late father, who performed a traditional meke, Se Mai Na Ua Loka Loka, for the ro royal entourage. Kelly Vavala reports. Fiji Day brings out emotional memories for Evelyn Dimbao. Her late father was one of the northern villagers who practiced a special make for Prince Charles. My dad practiced for three months to get the Ua Loka Loka Meke right. They would gather at Albert Park to practice every afternoon and I would accompany my dad after school. They would wear the traditional Meke attire to every practice. They took it very seriously because it was a sacred dance that was only performed for the highest authority. Ten years old at the time, Dibao watched her dad and the Vanua perform in front of thousands, followed by loud cheers. It still remains the biggest celebration in Fijian history. My classmates and I were told to stand on the roadside in Nosori and wave our flags. As soon as Prince Charles passed Nosori, we all descended to Albert Park in Suva. I went to watch my dad perform his meke in front of the prince. Until this day, I'm proud of him. The historic event for Dimbao was Fiji's first step in the right direction. It wasn't only the Fijian traditional mekis that were performed, I was even amazed at the other cultural dances. At that age I also started learning of how diverse Fiji was becoming and how independence from the British Empire could not have come at a more opportune time. For Dimbao, her father has left a legacy that the family will always be proud to uphold, and this Fiji Day, it is something they will honor. Kelly Vatala, FBC News.
And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight, liquidity reaches new high. And in growing Fiji, bridal shop boosts Nandi amidst COVID-19 crisis. Stay with us. Pula, nadang gua prosalan kerse, gua irkeraki. The television on the radio, Fijian, Radio Fijian, Nandomi Vid. Radio Fijian, Nandomi Vid. Excess liquidity in the banking system reached an historic high of 1.1 billion last month, says the Reserve Bank of Fiji. The RBF states this was driven by the increase in foreign reserves, which in turn were underpinned by government external borrowing. Governor Arif Ali says liquidity is forecast to remain at similar levels in the foreseeable future and continues to help reduce market interest rates, which generally fell in August. However, he says domestic credit contracted in the review month, driven by the decline in lending to the private sector. The governor says the outcome is reflective of a general tightening in lending standards amid the subdued economic environment. Annual inflation slid further to a negative 3.0 percent last month from negative 1.6 percent in July, primarily influenced by lower prices of alcoholic beverages, Yongona food and fuel. Volvo Cars says that demand rebounded in July and August. The company expects to hit its forecast of roughly flat sales year-on-year year in the second half of 2020. We now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. The U.S. dollar dipped from a two-month high today as renewed hopes of U.S. stimulus eased investor concerns about economic recovery. Meanwhile, the Chinese won gained after the country was added to the global bond benchmark. Democrats in the U.S. House are working on a $2.2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package that could be voted on next week. This move comes after the latest data showed the number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits increased last week, indicating the economic recovery was running out of steam. Meanwhile, Australia will simplify bank lending rules to free up credit in a bid to stimulate the economy, which slid into its first recession in nearly 30 years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic has taken a heavy toll on Australia's economy, and the Australian government has relaxed several rules for businesses and rolled out stimulus packages worth about $314 billion. That's all for this week from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Looking at today's local exchange rates as set early this morning, the foreign exchange market has remained vo volatile this week, resulting in the Sangamoli gaining against the Chinese yuan and the Aussie dollar, but leading against the other currencies we cover. Commodity prices were up, the price of oil rose past $40 a barrel, gold rose slightly to $1,866 per ounce, and silver closed up at $2,288 per ounce. Due to the high demand and popularity of her home business, an entrepreneur has decided to open her own shop in Martintar Nandi. Rowi Lal Boutique has invested in the economy and started what may be is the first bridal shop in the country. Lal, who was running the business in Suva, found that majority of customers in the Western Division needing wedding attire. It has been Lal's dream to have her own shop to cater for that special moment in life. And not only am I selling my own brands in the shop, I'm also reaching out to SMEs who would love to collaborate as my subcontractors as well. And with our brand of clutches, we have the local Artesian women that we reach out to that sell us their masi that we use on our clutches. And when a clutch is sold, we give them 33% of every sale. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thanks, Whitney. Good evening in sports tonight. New star is born at Mari 7th and Suva out to end six-year IDC drought. This and more coming up. Bula FM, number two and seri. Bula FM, number two and seri.
Every year, a star will be born at the Fiji Beat on March 7th, and this year it's Kaminieli Rasaku of the FDS Barbarian Brothers. Kaminieli Rasaku may be the answer to Gareth Baber's missing link in the rover's position. Baber was impressed with Rasaku and another youngster, Kitiani Salawa. Baber has been looking for a rover following Willy Monimboti to his departure, and his prayers might have been answered in the form of Rasaku. He's one of those Fijians who's blessed, blessed genetically. Um, if you have to look at the size of his legs, I mean, the two of mine for certain. And, you know, he, he, he's capable both in attack and defense. Rasaku has been quite outstanding at rover for Jerry Tuai's team. However, he says Mboti Tu is still the best. I can say that I'm Mboti Tu's replacement. I have to earn it, which means I'll have to work hard. And I'm no way near Mboti Tu. Another youngster that was impressive today, according to Beba, is Rasaku's teammate, Kitione Salawa. There is probably no second place to work effort. And um, I see all over the place, especially with Kitty, that you know he's never beaten. Um, somebody might hand him off, they might bump him, they might not make that tackle exactly when he wants it, but he'll go back for seconds and thirds and he'll make sure that he chases everyone down. And, um, I have to improve my defence so I don't turn and chase after players, which means my first up tackle has to be good and I should not be discouraged in defence. Both players are playing in their first Mari 7s and it's even quite special to play in the same team with Jerry and Pio Tuai. One time I watched them on television, but now I'm playing and training with them. It's quite an experience, and they have been helping us a lot too. The FDS Barbarians stopped their pool and will feature in the eliminations tomorrow. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. For 20-year-old Penny Chamini Tunakau, following the footsteps of former national sevens rep Apisai Nagaliva and France-based Alivere Tiraka is his ultimate goal. Now playing for the Naita Siri-based Seniboro Blues in the 44th Fiji Bita Maris tournament, the youngster hopes to catch the eyes of selectors. The Somani Kula Naita Siri native started playing for the Seniboro Rugby Club in high school. I've been playing for St. Borro ever since I was in high school. I think it was uh, around form 4 or 5. So it's been 5 years now that I'm playing for the club. Tunakau, who was part of the national under-19 team earlier this year, draws inspiration from Alivere Tiraka and Apisai Nagaliva and hopes he too will one day reach greater heights. Now we are... My dream is to follow the footsteps of two rugby players from my village who have secured contracts in France, Alibre Tiraka and Apisai Nangaliba. Fingers crossed that one day I will reach that level as well. As the youngest in the Senimboro Blue squad, team manager Moses Edamara says Tunakau is someone to look out for in the near future. I've been watching this kid play rugby since he was in high school. He is talented and has a lot of potential. He communicates well on the field and is a very disciplined player. I know Pensamini will go a long way. Tunakau was also part of the Dawadi High School Under-18 team that lost to Queen Victoria School in the semi-finals of the 2017 Dean's competition. Growing up watching the likes of former Flying Fijian star Serma Mburotu inspired 27-year-old Leapani Tuivanuavo to chase his passion in rugby. Currently playing prop for the Raywasa Resort Tavi Uniside, Tuivanuavo, like other players, wishes to one day don the white jersey or secure an overseas contract. The Neteo of Anuelevu, the Kaundra Veled, says while his age is catching up, he will stop at nothing to reach his goals. <laughs> When I was a kid, Serimaya Mburotu was someone I looked up to. I liked his playing style. He's a hard runner and my dream is to one day follow his footsteps or even be better than him. Going up against the champion like Nandranga in tomorrow's Keeper Cup competition will not be an easy task for Tailevu. Tailevu managed to win its first home game of the season after defeating Low Toka 31-12 last week. The win puts Tailevu's Skipper Cup hopes back on track and into sixth place on the standings. Tailevu head coach Samisoni Baikei Tonga wants to continue this winning streak and knows getting the right combination can get them the win against the Stallions. We need to work on our combination. We don't have the shapes there. We need to work on our shapes, how to coordinate. Uh, the link to the ball and uh, we're glad that we have some uh, players who have recovered from the fatigue and uh, on that area we are working on. Also our kickers. Silver football president Ritesh Pratap knows how crucial fitness can be in a competition like the court's inter-district championship. 
The capital side will be out to end their six-year drought in the IDC as they focus on getting the team up to par for the week-long tournament. Suva last won the IDC in 2014 where they defeated Nandi in the final 1-0 at the NZ Stadium in Suva. Pratap says the team is injury-free but will need to work on maintaining their winning momentum from the Vodafone Premier League. So major injuries in the team, all the players are, are well. Uh, the only place we are working on is on our, sorry, on our fitness, eh? fitness and on our scoring uh, places. I think that's the place we have been uh, working on from the last two or three weeks. Uh, I think looking at the BPL games uh, and other tournaments, uh, that's the only area we have been working on very hard. I think uh, so hopefully by RDC we'll be there. The North Queensland Cowboys consigned the Broncos to their first ever wooden spoon with a 32-16 victory at Suncorp Stadium last night. Cowboys winger Kyle Fett helped himself to a hat-trick and gave retiring Cowboys legend Gavin Cooper a winning finish to his stellar 332-game career. In play of the day, we have this try by Minos Mbunivai against the star-studded Police White at the Murray Sevens. While Mbunivai might have lost the match, this was the highlight for the side. Again, the gap opens, the offload works. Brilliant execution. And Mbunivai in for the try. Manoa Vakatawambai. That's classic. Simple rugby. Bunivai finding the space and uh, running on to the pass and brilliantly splitting the police defense. Manoa. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in new media, Facebook to start oversight boards. Bula FM number two and Bula FM number two and Seri. Facebook's long delayed independent oversight board plans to launch in mid to late October, just before the November U.S. presidential election. A board member said he doesn't know whether they will hear cases related to the election. Cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands continues. Quick look at the weather map. Looking out the west, there was sunshine during the day and generally clear skies. Eastwards from Pack Harbour to Suva, it was cloudy with periods of sunshine. And up north, generally fine weather. At sea, moderate to fresh east to southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 1.46 a.m. Sunrise is at 5.53. Now, for tomorrow, expect weather similar to today's. It will prevail in most centres. Our further outlook is for cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And in Fijian Pulse, we asked, how does local rugby tournaments help young players? This is a great platform for young ruggers from the rural and maritime areas who showcase their talents and uh, who knows, they might be recognized by the national coach. These local tournaments are important to develop young rugby players in Fiji so they can join our national team and even some overseas rugby clubs. I commend local rugby organizers for such a sporting event that will boost rugby skills among our youngsters. The Mari Sevens is an avenue to nurture young players who have a high chance of joining the national or overseas teams in the near future. Recapping the main stories, for tonight, PM makes major climate announcement, Khan disputes NFP claims, and defending champion out of Myra Sevens. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking, 
Should more road humps be put in place to curb the growing number of road accidents? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, last one for the week, and how absolutely fitting. The Sand Dunes is well known for its breathtaking view, and this picture was sent in by Shival Narayan. Send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. तो दिल्ली हम दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ। रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन